today I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with Chris Dobbin from Nova Leap Health. How are you today? Doing great, thank you. And of course, this is all about home care, this rising market, and you've exceeded everyone's expectations, exceeded revenue for nine quarters in a row. Is that correct? We have achieved nine quarters in a row, yes. Okay, no one out there is doing this, so can you tell us what makes you different? Why, why are you exceeding revenue, Chris? I, I think it comes back to our plan. We had a, a strategy to begin with. We knew we were going to roll up these small home care businesses. We've been really successful doing that. Uh, Post-acquisition integration has gone really well for us, and, and so we're just hitting all the metrics that we're looking to hit. Speaking of metrics, I received a number of emails from everybody asking me to ask Chris questions, and here's a question we have. Chris, could you please provide an update on your focus on dementia care, please? Yeah, actually, dementia care is very important for us. It's a, in some of our agencies, upwards of 75% of our clients have some form of dementia. And really what we've, we've done after we make an acquisition, we bring a very specific dementia training program uh, to that company, to that agency. So we train our senior people, number one. They get certified through a third party, and then they train all of our caregivers, and we're paying our caregivers to take that training. It has a tremendous impact both on retention of our caregivers but also directly to the families that we provide service to. And of course, acquisitions. There's a lot of companies out there. I hear acquisitions every day. Everyone's an M&A expert. Tracy, look at my acquisition. All right. Why are your acquisitions making money? What do you think are one of your competitive form formula variables? I'm going to say probably how you select them, correct? I, I think there's two things we look at. One is from an operational perspective. We want to make sure that the people that we retain, so the operating team is really strong because the owner is typically leaving as part of a succession plan and then we have a good caregiver base within a, a secondary market. That's what we look for. So a historically profitable company, you know, sort of ticks all the boxes for us. Um, so that's the operational side in terms of personnel. Then it really comes down to math, right? So what's the billing rate for revenue? Do they manage overtime properly? So are they, are they allocating their resource, their employees over the right clientele and matching them, them up? Do they manage their expenses? Do they utilize technology? So as an example, we took one agency, which is a terrific performer for us. Historically, it had a very manual payroll uh, processing system. We've taken that from four days to four hours. Okay, Chris, as someone who may potentially be taking care of my parents in the future with home care, it's great that you're saving money in these acquisitions, but we care about really, really great care. So talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, so again, it comes back to our dementia training program. So we're really hiring people with a, with a, a good background. So that could be an RN, an LPN, so registered nurse, licensed practical nurse, certified nursing assistant, as an example, or uh, you know, mature individuals that have raised a family, are perhaps faith-based, and they're looking to give back to the community. So those are individuals that are, that are perfect hires for us. So we, we hire those individuals, and then we either, we either uh, supplement the training they already have, or we give them new techniques around dementia training. And that's the impact that we can have on the families. Uh, lots of examples I could provide where we've you know, had tremendous impact on, on the families, but it's really through the training program that we, we provide. And of course, you've now moved into South Central US. Yeah. What, what was the catalyst for going there? We looked at the platform that we built in, in, uh, in New England. It's been really successful for us. And so, you know, when you're successful at building a, a regional platform, then for us, the time was right to move to a different region. Uh, we were opportunistic. We saw an agency sort of ticked all the boxes of what we're looking for. Uh, the time was right for us, and so we made the move. So we see South Central as another, um, you know, New England type of situation where we're going to build it out over the course of the coming years. Okay, so. Now i got to ask you the hard question. You've had nine consecutive <laughs> quarters in a row of exceeding you know, revenue projections. Can you tell us, can we anticipate a tenth one? Uh, I would say for sure. I mean, here we are, you know, we, we've just made two acquisitions at the beginning of Q4. So we made the Oklahoma acquisition in October, and then we did a tuck-in in Massachusetts in November. So you know, those obviously weren't baked in into the Q3 numbers. And so uh, certainly my expectation is that we'll continue to deliver record revenue going forward. Is it too late to buy the stock? It's never too late to buy the stock. Okay, but valuations. I mean, you had what, a 52-week high yesterday. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, we, I think we did actually touch on the 52-week high yesterday. Uh, so we've been on a, a bit of a run. I think there's a greater awareness uh, of what's happening with our stock. Um, there's been some fund managers that are, are picking us as a top pick for 2020, which is nice. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely not too late to buy our stock in the open market. 
For the record, I am a shareholder of Nova Leap Health, and uh, we're definitely making you one of our top picks for 2020. Thank you so much, Chris. Thanks for having me.